Now, I know what you're thinking. Mitch is a lifeguard. What does he know about being a PI? Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst TV spinoffs. If we don't find a way to lose these guys, we're both dead. Okay, I'm in trouble. I gotta finish strong with a bold choice they'll remember. What are my options? For this list, we'll be looking at the most poorly received or ill-conceived shows that failed to measure up to their parent programs. We won't be looking at spin-offs of reality shows or any animated offerings this time around. What's the most unnecessary TV spin-off of all time? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. CSI Cyber Spin-off of CSI Crime Scene Investigation Guys, Avery just sent me a text message. Two hours ago, the U.S. government was hacked. CSI Cyber tried to take the franchise out of the morgue and into the world of digital crimes. However, they hit a firewall of criticism. The show was steeped in computer jargon that the show had to stop to expand on. Viewers also thought that watching characters stare curiously at laptops while spouting exposition was much less fascinating than examining bodies and morgues. Although Cyber tried to reinvigorate the show in Season 2 by adding the reliable Ted Danson, his talents simply weren't enough to bring people in every week. Between its low critical reception, rocky viewership, and its short run, it's far and away the least successful CSI spinoff. But I'm going to need you to accept my resignation, Avery. What? Number 19. After MASH spin-off of M.A.S.H. The U.S. Army, which usually makes mistakes only on days that have a Y in them, pulled a boner and let me out one day early. In After M.A.S.H., three characters from the original series left behind the Korean War setting of the beloved parent series and started working in a veteran's hospital. Although the new program tried to capture the blend of drama and comedy that made the original work, it fell flat. The characters that were brought back didn't have enough chemistry to match the classic ensemble. Additionally, the choice to bring back the laugh track made for moments that ranged from uncomfortable to unwatchable. It is the end of the world. He's dead. Oh. <laughs> they realized something right then and there. While After MASH had a few redeeming moments, fans flocked to other shows with relatively fresher concepts. A sharp decline in ratings for season two led to the show being canceled right in the middle of its run and discharged from TV. Excuse me, Mike. But I spent too many years in the cavalry not to recognize the gentle thud of stable droppings. <laughs> Number 18. The Walking Dead World Beyond. Spin off of The Walking Dead. We don't even know if the siren works or if we can get it to work. We weren't going to risk anyone on this. Set in the same zombie filled world as the original post apocalyptic hit, The World Beyond followed the misadventures of four teens who had to make a cross country journey. It also promised to expand upon the world of The Walking Dead and solve franchise mysteries. Unfortunately, the show put more emphasis on teen drama than the exciting possibilities of its premise. While the lead actors gave solid performances, their characters just weren't as compelling as franchise icons like Rick Grimes and Daryl Dixon. But the real nail in the coffin was that the main story moved slower than a decaying zombie. Ultimately, The World Beyond just didn't have enough life in it to make fans love it. We are the light of the world. It's a lie. Number 17. Checking In Spin-off of The Jeffersons After Florence, the maid became a breakout supporting character on The Jeffersons, executives decided to give her a chance to lead her own series. On Checking In, she moved on up to leading the quirky staff of an upscale hotel. Florence was just as funny and quippy as ever. Well, hello, Florence. Uh, Hi, love. Well, I see somehow you made it to your first paycheck. Yes, I did, in spite of you. Unfortunately, the characters around her didn't measure up. And despite having an entire hotel to play with, characters were stuck in drab offices for long stretches of time. The network canned the show after just four episodes. Fortunately, Florence was able to get her old job back on the Jeffersons after the executives made it clear her hotel and show had burned down. Didn't you hear the news? The St. Frederick Hotel had a fire. What? Child, it went down in flames. Number 16. Galactica 1980. Spin-off of Battlestar Galactica. 
When the original Battlestar Galactica series was cancelled soon into its run, fans pushed for ABC to give the show a second chance. But viewers quickly wished they hadn't. In order to make the spin-off of Galactica 1980 cheap, the network cut or replaced fan-favorite characters. Although the parent series focused on a civilization fleeing an enemy in space, the new show grounded the events on Earth. I think we're gonna have one fine time. Maybe not. What is it? The fish-out-of-water premise couldn't capture the dramatic weight of the franchise's previous adventures, and viewers weren't happy to see the characters they loved tossed aside or completely forgotten about. After wading into an asteroid field full of negative feedback, Galactica 1980 was canceled after its 10th episode. What have I done? I led them here. Number 15. Mrs. Columbo – Spin-Off of Columbo Since the hard-boiled Columbo was such a hit with fans, the executives made the logical choice to green-light a series that follows his wife while he lives off-screen. Coincidentally, she has a talent to solve mysteries that rivals her husband's. Neither fans nor Columbo actor Peter Falk were happy with this premise. Thank you very much for your kind attention, Sergeant Norris. Now if you'll just get the hell out of my house. Oh, excuse me, Mrs. Columbo, I did mean to offend you. Oh no, no offense at all. Those who could look past its problematic setup found a middling mystery show that lacked the main personality that originally pulled people in. Overall, Mrs. Columbo was so divorced from its predecessor's concept that they might as well have renamed it. The franchise would later throw salt on the wounds of the failed show by heavily indicating the spin-off wasn't canon. Well, now I gotta admit I'm confused, sir. Number 14. Living Dolls – Spin-off of Who's the Boss Hey, Miss Della, you made it! Of course, would I miss a chance for us to have some fun? Fun? Here? against Trisha's rules. How do you squander the talents of celebrated actresses like Halle Berry and Leah Remini? Simply put them in a low-quality spin-off. In Living Dolls, both actresses played young women who lived in a house with fellow aspiring models and a stern yet caring mother figure. The jokes about the industry failed to land. At times, the show even made fun of harmful aspects of societal pressures models face. Fine, don't exercise. But don't come crying to me when you get on the scale and it says, Will one of you please get off? <laughs> but the aspect that really drove people away is the fact that the show is barely connected to the original. A couple of characters just happen to know people from Who's the Boss. This fragile connection between shows wasn't enough to convince people to give the new spinoff a second look. You know, if I do move back, I'll probably drive you nuts. Probably. Number 13. Once Upon a Time in Wonderland – Spin-off of Once Upon a Time Alice, you need to listen to me. No, I'm not going anywhere! Why must you always be so bloody stubborn? A few years after a well-received fantasy series reimagined numerous fairy tale characters, a new show limiting its scope to focus on Alice was launched. Her Wonderland show is meant to be a bit darker and more focused on the heroine's story. However, Alice's spin-off wasn't strong enough on its own to survive. Although Disney characters could still cross over, the narrowed spotlight on her made guest appearances less frequent. The plot was also bogged down by a romantic plot that took ages to get going. And it didn't help that the CGI wasn't as sharp as its contemporary shows. Since Once Upon a Time was also running at the same time, viewers didn't have enough incentive to keep visiting Wonderland. Hearing it out loud, it all sounds quite... Posterous, wouldn't you agree, Alice? Yes. Number 12. The Blacklist Redemption – Spin-off of The Blacklist Do you want the prisoners rounded up? Call the U.S. Marshals. If you want the mess you created handled covertly, we do this my way. We understood why NBC wanted to expand the universe of this popular thriller after the runaway success of the original. However, it's a little bit harder to see why they made Redemption so similar to its parent show. Both shows center on a dynamic between a special agent and a parental figure. Additionally, the characters in Redemption also chase down high-caliber criminals while uncovering a larger plot. To make matters worse, the leads of the spin-off just weren't as compelling as the cast of the parent show. Redemption's biggest sin was that it wasn't distinct enough from a better version of itself that was still on air. There just wasn't enough reason for audiences to watch two of the same product. Is there anything I can do? 
Do you want to talk about it? Trevor had a cancellation. Number 11, Booker, spinoff of 21 Jump Street. Am I supposed to get some profound meaning from that look? Now I'll call you to the meeting when I'm ready. Be prepared to answer some hard questions, Booker. During his time on 21 Jump Street, Dennis Booker went undercover with fellow officers to bust criminals. After the character quit the force and was spun out on his own show, he traded in a police badge for a job at a big insurance company. The writers intended to use this framing device to allow Booker to investigate a wide variety of cases. However, the premise wasn't strong enough to justify the random series of adventures he went on. Critics found the cases to be either dull or derivative of other great works. After a rocky season, Booker was forced into retirement. I'd rather take my cut and cash than a bullet lead. Don't bother me again. I'm out of here. Number 10, Joey, spinoff of Friends. I can't believe this. Oh, I gotta call Bobby and see if my character got voted off the show. NBC desperately wanted to keep the Friends magic going, but the spinoff centered around the dim-witted yet lovable actor Joey. Portrayed by Matt LeBlanc, the character was still charming and funny, but the cast and writing around him wasn't nearly as strong. Characters like his sharp sister Gina and best friend Zach felt like pale imitations of icons like Monica and Ross. Additionally, while Joey's acting pursuits made for great beat plots on Friends, his career plotline wasn't as gripping when it's the main focus. Although curious fans checked into the series for a while, the ratings eventually fell throughout the second season until it was canned. Joey went from a promising show to a punchline about how easily spinoffs can go off the rails. Bam, we're done. Right. What? That's it? Okay, this was a bad idea. Number nine, Highlander, The Raven, spinoff of Highlander, the series. She is immortal. A thousand years old, and she cannot die. If you didn't know that the cult classic Highlander film even had an original TV show, then it's safe to assume that you never heard of the failed female-led spinoff. In the pilot of Highlander the Raven, main character Amanda uses her immortality for personal gain, but she's inspired to turn her never-ending life around after an officer dies to save her. Despite having a strong hook, viewers found the writing for the characters to be extremely weak. Amanda and her partner Nick failed to come across as fully formed and three-dimensional people. While the heroine may live forever, the show's legacy will likely be lost to time. This relationship is going nowhere fast. Number 8. Sanford Arms Spin-off of Sanford and Son I bought this place from Fred and it's now a hotel. It's called the Sanford Arm. Oh. This is my lobby and the rooms are right next door. Once the two leads of Sanford and Son moved on from the network, NBC tried to proceed without them with the spin-off. In the new show, an original character named Phil tries to make a home rental business work while living in the house that the previous main characters had. We, we, we're here to see Fred. Oh, Fred! Fred doesn't live here anymore. He's gone. He's gone? Oh, goodness. Fred finally had the big one. <laughs> the premise served as a great metaphor for what fans found wrong with the series. Instead of trying to step out of the shadow of the original program, Sanford Arms doubled down. The presence of the original show supporting characters just reminded people of the leads that were missing, and the humor wasn't enough to charm fans. Eight episodes into the run, Sanford Arms was closed for business. I mean, if you don't say it, we'll ruin the whole show. Number 7. Models, Inc. Spinoff of Melrose Place. Cut the snow job, Eric. You know I don't allow any of my models to have managers. Okay, this is good. This is good. We're opening up the lines of communication. Someday, a model-centered spinoff of a popular show may thrive for six seasons in a movie. Until then, mishaps like Models, Inc. show us why this very specific formula is flawed. This drama was meant to combine the day-to-day -day struggles of the characters with a murder mystery. Despite starting off in a relatively realistic place, the show got more absurd as the season went on. There were plot lines between everything from hired killers to mysterious doppelgangers of dead characters. Outside of its absurd plot lines, it didn't handle serious issues with the nuance they deserved. When combined with lackluster performances from the cast, there was little reason for viewers to tune into the Melrose Place spinoff. Gerard, no. 
This is my year for the finale. I earned it. I deserve it. Number six, Criminal Minds Beyond Borders, spinoff of Criminal Minds. Over 68 million Americans leave the safety of our borders every year. If danger strikes, the FBI's international response team is called into action. The premise of this show alone was enough to turn legions of viewers away from the spinoff. While Criminal Minds mainly focused on serial criminals in America, Beyond Borders attempted to see if the concept could work abroad. Since the main characters of the spinoff solved cases where Americans were victims, the villains were largely non-American. This caused the show to come off as largely xenophobic. You don't know what I'm saying. That's another problem. I mean, not a single word of English. There are only five volunteers here. I feel bad for him. After people dove into the series, they found the episodes to be littered with cheap cultural stereotypes and generalizations. Even if the premise wasn't problematic, the characters failed to pull in viewers either. This show was quickly shuttered after being hit with backlash for nearly every aspect of its existence. <laughs> Number 5. Joni Loves Chachi – Spin-Off of Happy Days While the success of Happy Days led to seven spin-offs of varying quality, Joni Loves Chachi was the most infamous of them all. This sitcom revolved around a couple who tried to achieve music stardom in a new city. Although their bandmates and friends were supposed to be eccentric, the majority of them just came off as annoying. Oh! Hey, Bingo, you all right? Oh, I busted my pixie sticks! Oh, my heart. And while Joni and Chachi were great in the Happy Days ensemble, they just weren't as dynamic as co-leads. The writing also took a notable dive after the first handful of episodes. Shortly after ratings dipped, the duo of lovebirds slash songbirds were sent back to Milwaukee to help wrap up Happy Days. Well, what's wrong with this? What's wrong? What's wrong is I, is I feel like you're a complete jerk. Oh, come on. Number four, Baywatch Nights, spinoff of Baywatch. Now, I know what you're thinking. Mitch is a lifeguard. What does he know about being a P.I.? It was hard enough to buy that Mitch from the lifeguard show Baywatch was going to lead a show where he was a private investigator. When audiences struggled to accept the concept, the spin-off changed tones completely and became a spooky mystery show. Baywatch Nights brought paranormal elements to the beaches of Los Angeles and beyond. Although it desperately wanted to be X-Files, the mysteries weren't intriguing enough. But more importantly, the show's tone had changed so much that Mitch felt like a fish out of water on his own show. Audiences agreed that the lifeguard should stick to saving people during the day instead of floundering during the Baywatch nights. Did you see it? Look, I saw something, all right? I don't know what it was, okay? Number three, The Brady Brides, spinoff of The Brady Bunch. Shortly after Marsha and Jan Brady marry their respective husbands, the four of them decide to save money by moving in together. It's the share the cost by moving in together. That's the way that they became the Brady Bride. Since the sisters were agreeable and pretty much on the same page, their scenes were pretty predictable and flat. The show tried to play Jan's straight-laced husband against Marsha's free-spirited spouse to generate most of the comedy. I can get him to talk. How? Please, Phil! <laughs> Please talk to us! However, the writers didn't do enough with that tried-and-true formula to make it feel fresh. The laughs they managed to get from their live studio audience didn't mirror the viewers' enthusiasm at home. Unfortunately for the Brady sisters, their attempt to spin off into their own series stalled after 10 episodes. As for me, this is where I get off. <laughs> Number 2. Mr. T and Tina – Spin-off of Welcome Back, Cotter Good, Good luck, luck in Chicago, Chicago shorty! <laughs> This infamous program fell so hard into obscurity that we could barely find any footage of it. The series followed Pat Morita as an inventor named Taro Takahashi, who leaves Japan to live in Chicago. Although the writers made eight versions of the pilot, early test audiences still weren't jazzed about it. Critics felt like Takahashi was written into plots that promoted negative stereotypes about Japanese people. His co-lead, Susan Blanchard's character, was so disliked that her role was cut back between pilots. In the end, ABC only managed to put five episodes out before pulling the plug. 
Who knew that a combo of bad writing and a character who audiences saw in a single episode of Welcome Back, Cotter wouldn't lead to success? I can see I'm not appreciated here. I'll go to another class. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Tortellis Spin-off of Cheers You cheated on both your wives. You were dishonest in business. You were a terrible father. And don't I get any points for consistency? At the start of this pilot, Nick Tortelli dreams he's being damned to hell for cheating on his wife Loretta in real life. Surprisingly, things don't get better from there. Nick has so few redeeming qualities that we aren't rooting for him to succeed in love or business. His co-lead Loretta is also written to be such an airhead that she feels more like a cartoon than a fully formed character. I've changed completely. I don't know about that. The shirt is different, but the pants look the same. <laughs> Throw in a convoluted plot where Nick, his wife, and son end up living in their sister-in-law's house in Vegas, and you've got all the ingredients for a disastrous spin-off. The fans felt that the Tortellis were just too obnoxious to watch. This family just had no luck with audiences outside of the Cheers bar. Uh, I need help. I want to be good. I'm trying to be good. Give me one sign. Please. Anything. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.